there is no question that the United States still has a very unique position in the world order. It's also a reality that the kind of dominance that the United States had in the 1950s, 60s, or in the 1990s, 2000, it doesn't have. The reality is the world is very globalized. Politics uh, of any country doesn't necessarily stay within the national boundaries of the country. Democracies are mutually respectful. It cannot be that one democracy has a right to comment on another and that's part about promoting democracy globally. Foreign interference is foreign interference, irrespective of who does it and where it is done. There is no question that the United States still has a very unique position in the world order for reasons of uh, polemics or mind games or posturing. People may suggest otherwise, but even the people who suggest otherwise uh, know the truth. At the same time, it's also a reality that the kind of dominance that the United States had in the 1950s, 60s, or in the 1990s, 2000, it doesn't have. So, uh, so it's a kind of half empty, half full, uh, situation. Now, for us, uh, uh, you know, which part works for us? Much of it does. You know, uh, I give you the example of Quad. I, you know, if you if you look today on technology issues or maritime safety, security, or supply chain issues, or, uh, or uh, even the manner in which international institutions should be. I mean, there will be a lot which would be common with the United States. Obviously, there would be some because, look, uh, we are a developing country. Our political history is different. Our actual interests in some cases, our trade interests or climate in climate action interests may be different. So there would be areas of differences. But if you ask me, saying net-net, where, where do you come out? I think we come out very overwhelmingly on the side of a strong relationship, which is why, actually, the story uh, if, if one looks at Indian foreign policy for the last, say, two to three decades, it's, it's really been a story of steady growth of India-U.S. relationship because I think successive administrations on both sides, uh, you know, going back, I would say, maybe to late Clinton, Clinton, Vajpayee, uh, I would sort of pick that as the inflection uh, point. I think since then, it's been steadily uh, on the up. So picking up on that, uh, the U.S. and India are among the world's <clears throat> leading countries with democratic forms of government. And uh, here in the U.S., uh, our democracy, which includes much debate about many issues, sometimes features political leaders in the U.S. making comments about democracy in India. And uh, that has sometimes provoked a, a crisp response from the external affairs ministry, perhaps uh, pointing out that there are uh, members of the Indian diaspora in the U.S. that might have concerns or complaints about racism or about gun violence. Uh, I wonder how you think about that dynamic and what potential possibilities you might see for constructive dialogue between the U.S. and India on these issues. Um, you know, there's uh, one, the reality, and two, the handling of the reality. Uh, what's the reality? The reality is the world is very globalized. Uh, and uh, uh, as a result, the politics uh, of any country doesn't necessarily stay within the national boundaries of the country. Now, the United States, of course, makes a special effort to ensure it doesn't. You know, that's, that's part of how you've conducted your foreign policy over many years. Now, uh, as uh, in, a, in a globalized era where there are also globalized, you know, global agendas, there are players who like to shape not only the politics of their own country or their own region, but try and do it globally. And, you know, social media, economic forces, financial flows, all these give you opportunities to do that. How do you shape the narrative? So, so you have a whole industry here, okay? Uh, so, so you write up reports about people, you rank people, you spotlight 
countries. That's that's the game. Now, uh, as I said, that's a reality. So what happens with that reality is it's part of the overall competition, a competition among countries and competition among political forces. And when it is a competition, you expect others to do what they will, and it's your right to do what you will. And that's playing out in a way. But if you look at a state to state, government to government level, uh, we think it's important that democracies are mutually respectful. It cannot be that one democracy has a right to comment on another and that's part about promoting democracy globally. But when others do that, then it becomes foreign interference. You know, foreign interference is foreign interference, irrespective of who does it and where it is done. So uh, it's a it's a it's a testy area. Mm -hmm. And my personal view, which I have shared with many counterparts, is look, you have every right to comment, but I have every right to comment on your comment. So don't feel bad when I do. Mm -hmm. 